Welcome back, everyone. We are on episode five now, on the run with the 2021 Olympic Trials 100 meter champion, the Trayvon Vermel. Thank you so much for joining me. For sure, for sure. Now, I would like to add that he's about six hours ahead. So I commend him for even joining me today. It's 11, about 11.30 his time. So, <laughs> you know, where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, yeah, we're going to get it done. Okay, let's bring it back. Let's just rewind. I know you've probably spoken about it a lot, but I really love your story. Mm -hmm. In 2016, you were feeling a little bit of aches and pains in your left heel, but you know you're going to try out for the 2016 Olympics in Rio. You really wanted it. Take me through that. Take me through what happened, just to let the fans know what was going on, what was going through your head in that time. Oh, uh, so in 2016, I was in Birmingham. Uh, I had just got done doing the street race. And when I went over to to the um, their championship national stadium, we was gonna, I was going to run the 100 there. And I want to say the day before, I felt like some like a pain in my foot when trying to do my starts. And I couldn't even walk after, after I felt the sensation. So I pulled out of the meet and ended up flying back to the States getting scans, MRIs, ultrasound, all the, you know, the modalities that, you know, athletes usually do when they deal with these type of injuries with inflammation and everything. So we wanted to see what was uh, We felt like if we could pretty much numb the pain, we could try to go out there and attempt uh, getting on the team. So the main focus was try to take, take away the pain and be able to uh, get out there and compete. Now you ended up having two surgeries. How are you able to bounce back from that. A lot of athletes, when they go through one surgery, then they just look at it like, okay, I'm about to hang up the spikes. It's about that time. But you didn't. So it's it's tough. I tell people that all the time. Like I, don't, I know to um, a lot of people out there in the world, like when they see me, they, they see a guy who's very confident and and strong-minded and strong-hearted, but I can be honest, like it's not an easy route, especially when you're dealing with injuries and obviously in the back of your head, you think, okay, could this be career-threatening? Could this be the end? Like, what's next? When will I be able to do what I, I love doing again? I think that's the hardest thing with dealing with that, why it takes so long to get back to um, that platform or that, that stage to, to compete and perform. Uh, for me, it's a... It was a good thing that I had a great, uh, great set of people, support system around me who kept me uh, on my toes, who kept me motivated to keep pushing and keep fighting. Uh, you definitely uh, got to keep that mindset day in and day out. Like you, as soon as you give in, that's when everything goes wrong. So for me, it was trying to stay out of that that dark mindset of like, okay, this not happening. I'm not coming back. I didn't want to get to that point because I knew if I got to that point, then I had I lost the race. Like ultimately. So I had people around me that kept me motivated, kept me on my toes. And obviously the growth in my faith played a tremendous part of the transformation of then to now. And is the main key to why I am who I am today. So you mentioned the people that were supporting you really helped you get through it. I know that you ended up switching coaches because you were at Baylor and you ended up switching coaches to go to Florida how were you able to even find the strength to switch coaches while dealing with injuries? Because, you know, a lot of athletes just think that, well, I'm dealing with this injury, so that's the reason why I'm not improving right now. But yeah. you looked at it like, okay, maybe it just needs to be a switch in scenery, or what was it for you? Uh, I feel like when you reach that, that's when you're like, okay, I've done everything possible. The the people that I entrusted done everything that they could possibly do is like, okay, maybe it's time to uh, veer down another path. And that's not always a bad thing. People feel like, oh, if I leave a coach or I leave a, a place that I'm used to, then 
that particular scenery or that person didn't do their job. Like, no, everybody know uh, me and Coach Ford's relationship, and we got the job done. Like, we, 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 we the NCAA system, uh, running fast, made my first team, senior team with him. So it's not like he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, it's just when those resources um exalted and um, there's really not more you can do, you have to find another source now. So we end up sitting down because he helped me, you know, find rain. It was all just figuring out what was best for me. Wow, that's amazing. The fact that you said that he sat down with you to help you find another coach, like just to enter. You feel like it was kind of like you're entering a new stage in your life. Like, you know, Coach Ford was a great coach for me, a great Baylor coach for me, you know, even some professional life. But then it's time to just take the next step forward. Hmm. Yeah. So, so with me, I like I build relationships with my coaches. That's why a lot of coaches haven't coached me. Um, I do look at it as stages, um, but I'm blessed to have people that came into my life that coached me that I built a great relationship with. Like I look at all my coaches as family. Um, and I think it was just that point to where like it's it's like it's like the track scene, right? You go from AAU, uh, you go to high school, you go to college, try to go to the pro level. Like it's all certain levels. So my my late coach who passed away, she had me since I was a youngin up until I was 18. Then she passed the baton to Coach Ford, and he had me through our college and, and the, the first uh, beginning stage of my pro life. And now we go to Raina, where he, he's helping me pretty much be the uh, everybody knew I could be. You know, so I, I think it's all about stages. I feel like it's just like in, in corporate America, right? When you get a job, you don't go just straight to the CEO. You know, you go through internships, you get the job, you're an employee now, you move up in ranks to a COO, to, you know, all these things, they get to where they want to be. So I just look at that as the stages of my life, like ultimately to be where God needs me to be at the end of it all. I like that. I like that. I like it. Just different stages in your life, just moving on up. So you have a pretty big training group in Florida. Hmm. How is it training with them and having a large training group now? It's a change from Baylor. Uh, it's different. Uh, I think when we go to college, a lot of people see it as, oh, it might be just one one big dog or two big dogs, right? So when you come to this group, it's like everybody in the group has done something. I'm talking about multiple national titles or Olympic champions, world champions, or uh, you know, world junior record holders and record holders. It's, it's, it's so much pot. So you don't come in thinking, oh, I'm about to be top dog. I'm about to be the, the king of the group. Like, nah, like everybody has accolades. Everybody has titles. So it's nobody in the group that's better than the next. Like everybody has their, their own um, uh, title to, to their career. So for me, it was like, okay, like, this is this is fun like it's all it's a team full of champions and you know i know the work ethic gonna be strong because everybody want to win so it, it was cool for me what does practice look like for you guys man every day is a dominant league like that's all the time uh it's it's never a day where like even with blocks you got you got us you got probably like the top like the top guys in the hundred meters in the block session you know what i'm saying so it's like it ain't it ain't no oh i'm killing everybody in the start so even if we do like 150s 200s like you got guys who are are, are olympic olympic medalists and, and world champions and stuff so it's like it's never it's never an easy day at practice like somebody is going to like it's not it's not a day where you like oh yeah i've been i've been running practice all week all month like mm -hmm. it's nothing like nah you come here you it's a dog eat dog world like nobody's slacking off it's a track meet every time you come to practice now how do you stay healthy yeah, nah, and <laughs> now how do you stay healthy and really focus on staying healthy when that you have that type of intensity when you come to practice uh you got you gotta be focused so for me like i don't do too much like i go to practice and i i go home right after and i do that every day like i don't do too much like you don't see me out and about 
um, ripping and running all the time. Like I literally wake up, I read, I go to practice, I come on, I probably talk on the phone, I might be on the game, but I don't leave my home. So it's like, I don't put my body through too much motion. Like it's the same routine day in and day out to the end of the season uh, to where I can relax and do other stuff. But while in season, I go to practice and I come on. Okay. You heard it here first. 977. How you achieve that is you go to practice and you go home. Don't do too much. I'm telling you, hey, <laughs> hey, you ask my coach every time he calls me, what you doing? I'm at the house. Like, hey, I, it ain't, I ain't <laughs> going. I go straight from practice. I go right to the house. Like, that's literally every day. <laughs> okay. Practice, home. That's the key. Okay, got it. Now, <laughs> so we were just talking about 2016. Fast forward to 2020. When COVID hit, I was really, I know I don't want to get into the big COVID spiel. A lot of athletes are tired of talking about it, but I just really wanted to know, were you prepared for the Olympics that year anyway? Like what type of condition were you in? I know later on in August and July, you were on it and we're going to talk about that. But for starters, how were you feeling when the Olympics were first canceled? Oh. Uh... I really didn't have no feeling to it. Um, I can't say if I would have been ready or not. Uh, it was just, it was like I said, it was the transition point. I just got into the group that that uh, fall of 2019. So I had just got, you know, into the training, uh, came into everything, trying to learn and understand how Coach, uh, Coach Reno coaches. So I was still in the learning process. Uh, once we got towards the outdoor season later on in the uh, in the in the uh, in the summer, and I uh, and I produced the times, I was like, okay, like shoot, we you know we making progress, but you know as we all know, those three rounds is a lot different. Um, it's a beast. So just because I was able to run the nine the nine ninety and the nine eight wind dated doesn't mean my body was ready to go multiple rounds. Um, it's plenty of times, you know, people see me go to these meets uh, down there in Claremont in 2020, and I, I run one round and not run in the final. <laughs> like, I wasn't, like, I just go and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I run fast in the prelims. I'm like, all right, I'm done. Uh, the one time um, at season when I did run two rounds, I was tired. Like, it was, like, it was good, but I don't think my body was ready just because of the transition. And, I think it was cool that it got postponed uh, in the benefit of those who may be making transitions or getting uh, getting back from injuries. Obviously, nobody wants to ever see the Olympics off its timeline every four years. Uh, I don't think nobody expected this to happen, but it did. But I think us as athletes, we have to make sure that we're prepared. Agreed. Now, like you mentioned, you would run the prelim and then just shut it down. Like my body is not prepared for this. And then you said when you even ran two rounds, you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. So what I think I've noticed from you this year, you have been running a lot smarter versus harder. How important do you think that that is, especially being a professional athlete where you did have to do three rounds at Olympic trials? What does that mean to you to run these rounds smart? Uh, at first, before we're even running around smart, you have to you have to know what your body needs. The type of person I am, I don't never um, scare my way as uh, away, or scare myself away from progression. So, I, 2020 season went away, and I'm pretty sure my coach already had it in mind. But I'm like, look, coach, like I want to be able to get through rounds. Like, yeah, we had a good 2020. Um, we back rolling and, and things looking good, but I still feel a little winded. Like I don't want to get to trials and Olympics and, and and Olympic trials and be winded going through the first and second round uh, and be pretty much running on fumes in the final. I want to be able to uh, progress through the round smooth and um, without exerting a lot of energy. So once we understood that, we we hitting it. Like we doing different workouts, we getting the grind. And then once getting to trials, it's all about position. And so understanding what you need to do to put yourself in a position to where you can chill and relax. The, the last thing you want to do is go out there and, and blow your gasket early in the rounds because obviously it's hard to recover when running at such a high rate of speed. Uh, I think people forget that. That's why you see a lot of us, we get out 
And once we know we're in a good position, we shut it down. Like we don't use all the gas up in the in the rounds. Like, but like I said, it starts with training. So unless you are prepared, it's it's going to be very hard to make it through rounds. So just to reiterate what you said, you know, getting out and then just shutting it down. You did that in the prelims and ran nine eighty four, and that was you shutting it down. So are you saying that there's more in the tank for you? Like, that's not even your full potential because then you came back semifinal 990, final 980. You don't even feel like you've reached your full potential right. yet. And it's, it's hard to really, it's hard to really think about it because I'm not an athlete that thinks about it. So, um, like my coach always talked to me about what he feels that potentially I could run in the back of my mind. Yes, I do think about it, but it's only when he says it, but when I go home or I go, you know, another day and we not talking too much about times, like I don't think about it because I'm like, my purpose here is is bigger than just running fast times. The fast times are just the secondary blessing to the main purpose. So for me, I don't honestly know what my potential is whenever that day comes to where um, it's plastered onto the, onto the, uh, the timetable on the board then we'll know until then i'm just i'm just going out there doing what i can do because this is a way for me to voice a message and to to bring change amongst a lot of platforms and a lot of uh situations that's going on and you are definitely bringing change you talk about your faith a lot in a lot of your interviews after you run which i love i completely agree with so how are you able well, i really really want to touch on just for like my personal reasons how are you able to keep your faith through everything that was going on? You know, five years is a long time. And I don't exactly know what you went through during those five years, but I know that it can be really difficult to think that same mentality because you're such a strong mindset. Think that same mentality like, yeah, I just had two surgeries, but God got me at the end of the day. How are you able to keep that mindset? So it's... It's like I said before, it's hard um, understanding that you need uh, a village full of people around you. When I had my injuries in high school, I was like, okay, I'm young. You know, it is what it is. Even after me getting kind of through all the sorrow things, I'm like, all right, I can try it again. But when this situation happened in 2016, I'm like, okay, I'm a lot older now. Um, obviously not too much older, I'm still young, but just getting to that point where it's like in the prime of things, you know, people always say, oh, this age when you're prime, this, this, and that. So that scares you as an athlete. So you think like, man, what's going to happen? So that's when you start questioning uh, a lot of things, which people have to understand when, when you have faith, it's nothing wrong with questioning things, asking like, why, why is that? You know, um, those who, who dive into the scripture sees that many, many people righteous or, you know, righteous or not, they, they ask why. Uh, I think that's just part of our human genetics to do that. So, you know, it's, had to just trust him, uh, know whatever he wants for me to have, he would deliver that. And I think that's when it became a lot easier to deal with these situations. Do it still hurt when you get little um, kinks along the road, uh, little setbacks? Of course, because nobody want to deal with small injuries. Nobody want to deal with big injuries. We, we want things to be smooth sailing. But I think we have to get to the point of reality and be like, okay, things are going to happen. How we react to them is very important. And we got to keep believing. If you have faith, you got to keep believing in that. I like that. Sydney McLaughlin said something very similar when they kept shooting the gun over and over and over again. And she said it was to the point like where her yeah. knee was bleeding. She was like, well, yeah, things are going to happen. But like the only thing you can change is the way you react to them. And I feel like that's just perfect yeah. advice. You know, because you might not always have the yes. best conditions or might not even have the best mm -hmm. race, but it's always the way you react to it. Now, I know I yeah, don't no. want to go over time because it's really late for you. But like other you, than <laughs> other than your own event, what other event mm -hmm. are you most excited to watch in Tokyo? Mm. Man. I'm not going to lie, obviously, you know, everybody wanted to see the women's 100. That was that was the thing. And 
obviously because of the situation. I'm gonna still be locked into it because you know you got my sis, you got all you know all these other great ladies as well in the hundred that I love. You know my teammate Blessing. Uh, I love Shelly. I love watching Elaine and obviously Dina. I uh, mean her are real cool. So it's like I got a connection with all of them. So it's that's still gonna be a great race to me. But obviously with all the hype, like that was like it like we was ready to be locked in into that um but besides that i'm tied i'm tied for the men's and women's forward to meet hurdles i think everybody probably could agree with that because that's about to be crazy like i definitely think the world record is gonna get pushed further you know uh existence of what you know humans can do because they already running fast right now um Obviously, with Sid, she ran that 50, that 51, nine, and it's some people that can't even run open 400 that fast. Like that, like, <laughs> shoot, I probably can't even run an open 400 that fast. Like that blows my mind because I'm like, on a good day, if I try to run a 400, she might beat me going over hurdles. Um, <laughs> shoot, I know for a fact, I know for a fact that the guys beating me going over the hurdles in the open four. I know. I I ain't even gonna even sell myself to think I can run forty six right now like that's dead. So, um, yeah, that's that. Those are the races for me. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. What else? Um, I definitely I definitely look forward to watching Raven throw. Uh, me and her, me and her got a close connection, and I feel like she gonna turn up and, and throw something big. Um, I like the fifteen hundred. I like watching the 800. So it's, I got a lot of, it's a lot of races for me to watch. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard for me to really pick. But I think the the big two would definitely, you know, that's tied as the men and women's 400 hurdles. But like I said, the 100, the women's 100, I think still going to be legendary. But I think behind the hype of it all, like, dang, that that, that, that was going to be crazy. And then obviously I'm a fan of like the 4 by one So I'm still uh, – keeping my ears to the to the streets on everything to see about how that's about to set up because I think our women can do like some great things in that four by one as well. I'm glad you mentioned the four by one. Also do not agree <laughs> with you not being able to run a fifty one nine in the four hundred. <laughs> hey. That seems I don't I don't I don't believe hey. that. <laughs> but right, I'm, I'm glad trying you to mentioned tell the four by one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but I'm glad you mentioned the four by one because you know the relay pool. I I just kind of feel like this is the fastest trials this has ever been. So it makes yeah, things yeah. like the relay pool a lot more difficult. And mm. it, on the women's side, yes, but also on the men's side, do you think what are, what, what are you thinking? Can I ask what do you think yeah. is going to be, or you don't want to speak on it? Uh -uh. No, to be to be real, I don't know. I don't know because <laughs> obviously it's. It, I I think everybody knows a lot of politics that come into the four by one. Um, Thank you. And it's hard Thank to really you. say who's gonna be on it because you may see people on it that may not even made it in the hundred. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I can go back to 2015 where it was people that didn't even run the hundred uh, at relay camp. So you never know, you know, so it's, 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 it's hard to really dictate who going to be on the four by one. Cause once again, what we have to realize that now, like literally I can, I can literally say right now, this is a new era of sprinting. Like literally, I think, shoot, what Allison, like the only old head really on the team, you know? And I mean, you got <laughs> distance runners, but, but in the yeah. sense of sprinting, think about it. Like, everybody is new so it's like if you look at the men's side who made the uh 100 meter finals it's only two people that been on teams me and ronnie so it's like we gonna need some experience for right now since we don't have relay camps so it's like do you bring in people that didn't make the 100 meter squad because you know that they're fast enough to get the stick around still and bring home a goal or do you test your luck by putting all new people on this four by one just because they ran fast you know so it's it's hard like honestly i mean i i can't stop thinking about it because i don't know what's gonna happen because like i said like you got ronnie who's been on the royal relays uh team and then uh you got myself who been on on two of them so it's like okay 
besides that, it's like, man, it's it's going to be different. It's going to be different because now even if you take, like, the top four guys, what leg would they go? Like, if you actually, like, obviously, I, I study biomechanics. So I look at all, like, all the athletes, how they run, everything. So if you actually sit down, watch video of all the top the the, the top six or even eight guys in a 100-meter in final, and you look at how they start, how they accelerate, all these things, really sit there and think, like, dang, where would some of these people go? Because that's 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 the hard part. Like anybody, obviously, who may not even have like a fast start, right? If you got somebody like me or Ronnie coming at them, that's gonna be that's gonna be something hard to deal with. So it's like, man, we're gonna have to really be practicing once like our races are over, which we don't have a lot of days in between that, probably like a day or two, or we're gonna have to, you know, bite the bullet and bring people who are on previous teams who may still be able to run uh, at a top tier speed to be able to get the stick around. Wow. That insight. Love that. <laughs> because you're right. Yeah. There right, is so politics in it. You yeah. do have to, it's, it's a lot. It's like politics that go into it. But like you said, there's biomechanics that go into it. Like, do you just take the top yeah. four or do you pick from the 200? Because I know, you know, a lot of people are saying, but, you know, Noah Lyles has to be on it. He's been on it because, you yeah. know, world. So like he, like you said, experience will help yeah. out. Also because the men's team, sorry, but y'all are notorious for, you know, having trouble with the stick. But like you said, yeah. because of everybody's running dynamic and the way, yeah. you know, second leg might take off when they have so-and-so coming at them, it's a lot mm -hmm. to handle. Because th think about it like this, right? If you look at the history of the 4 by one literally the past seven, seven to eight years, it's been the same people. Mike Rogers, Tyson Gay, Gatlin, and they may have one new person. So the odds of them messing up, even though it's been some mess ups, is pretty slim. But now you're talking about all four new people. That's... That's gonna be interesting because you got hmm. you got nervousness, you got jitters. We talking about the Olympics. We talking about the Olympics. Like that's that's a lot to swallow. Like when you when you a first timer like at the games. The only thing that I feel like it will make it easier on people's nerves is that it's not gonna be a lot of people in the crowd. Like when it's hmm. like Rio or even like in twenty six in twenty fifteen Worlds, you talking about a hundred thousand people just staring at you like screaming you feel the ground shaking like that'd be the only thing i say that'll help uh help a lot of new people is because they won't have all that like it'd be almost it'll almost probably be like oregon like olympic trials like it was a lot it was a decent amount of people but it ain't gonna be that many you know what i'm saying so it it's it's gonna be interesting yeah like i said even with just like um positioning of like how like who goes on what like even if I go back to women right like I've been hearing like the whole thing about uh they were saying like Shakira should run third leg Shakira is fast she ran a fast two hundred she runs a fast hundred but why wouldn't you put her on a fly if you, if we all know her top end is like what she's really really known for you know what I'm saying like it's just like Noah like yes he runs a fast two hundred but they want him last leg because if we have to go catch somebody he's the he's the person that decelerates the slowest so it's like. It, it it just uh, I think we as a as an organization with USC Track Food, they gotta really think this through. Like especially when it comes to the relays. Now the the uh, the uh, uh, individual events, whatever happens, is gonna happen. But when it comes to the relay, <laughs> they have to really think about this. They have to absolutely think about it, map it out. Do you guys get a say in it? Maybe talk to you guys about it. The crazy thing is we do get a say in it, but it's all about who gonna say something. Like I it like, you know, I'm not gonna disclose what was, you know, spoken of, uh spoke about, but like I've I've heard certain things, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, look, no, you can I let people no, know. No, it's fine, you me, can. No, nah, I ain't they ain't, I ain't uh, that ain't me. <laughs> I hold water real tight. But I let people know that they can ask me um if they want any feedback because I'm a realist, like I'm gonna be honest. Um regardless of if people agree or disagree with it. Um, and that's not even me saying like, oh, my bad, somebody somebody just tried to call my phone. Uh, but I'm not gonna say like I'm a vet to the game to be able to call shots, 
but I'm gonna be honest if somebody come to me and ask me a question. Like that's just straight up. Understandable. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for joining me for episode five. You can see it on the Flow Track website, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Please get your rest. We're excited to see you in Tokyo. Thank you so much. For sure, for sure, no problem.